Hey guys, welcome back to Heartway Farms. Josh and Annie here, and we are talking about all things preparedness today. What do we do if we can't communicate? You take away that one thing and suddenly you feel a little helpless. Yeah. And I was like, I don't like that feeling. I feel like stocking up in the, these type of situations is one of the best investments you can make because it's just a peace of mind. So we're all gonna put on our <laughs> tinfoil hats today and we're gonna talk about some of the different areas that we are preparing. This is a topic that we love because honestly, it's just a way of life, not not something that we do out of fear or anything like that. Right. Um, something interesting happened the other day, mm -hmm. and when kind of these quote unquote scary moments come up, it makes you think about preparedness yeah. and being ready for situations that come up. And I'm not even talking about atomic bombs going off. <laughs> I'm talking about just little things that kind of shake you and point you to the fact that our system is incredibly fragile yeah. and that should kind of make us want to strive for preparedness more. Yeah. So the other day, Josh was gone at work, I was home with the kids, and we nobody could call anybody. Yeah. Nobody could call each other. You know, we occasionally have issues with our with our phone provider anyway, just because of where we live. So I didn't think much about it. Yeah. And I think you you called me suddenly from A like your line. work yeah. phone number. I was like, oh that's weird. And so I was able to answer because I was on Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And you're like, yeah, I can get through to you. And so I started doing some research. I was getting on, you know It's happening Social over. media. I got on social media and suddenly I was because I had not been on social media yet that day. And I went and I looked and many, not everyone, but yeah. many people were having this issue. And I was reading through some of these different threads and it got me thinking like, mm -hmm. okay, because these other people suddenly were thinking about how fragile the system is. Mm -hmm. And I was reading, you know, these, I'm in a couple moms groups and things like that. And they're like, I can't get a hold of anybody. If I didn't have Wi-Fi, I wouldn't be able to, to even communicate with my kids. I wouldn't be able to call my husband. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to, you know, X, Y, Z, fill in the blank. And that day later when things, you know, worked out, like where the phones were back up, I, you know, we were talking on the phone cause you were gone. And I was like, I don't like that feeling. Yeah. I didn't like that. I didn't like how one little thing, a cell phone not working. Right. Cause I, I'm sure we're not the only ones That's that primary, don't, don't yeah, have a home phone anymore, yeah. right? Like, I mean, yes, we have email and uh, Wi-Fi or whatever, but it's just not the same. And so you take away that one thing and suddenly you feel a little helpless. Yeah. And I didn't like that. So, but this isn't the only thing that's been going on recently. Right. We've also, on top of the cell phone outages, the other day, everyone thought it was just social media that was down on the 5th, I believe it was, because it was Tabitha's birthday. Mm -hmm. But it ended up being that you go across the um, the down website thing and it was like almost all internet service was down. And it's funny because these things, you know, we communicate on a daily basis with the cell phones and the internet and it's all, it's, it's all digital based now. Yeah. And so these things are extremely fragile. It just got us back to thinking of like, what do we do? If we can't can't communicate, like what's our rally point? Like where do we where do we come back together? Like how do you make this? And it's it, it went to not only our family, but we have a very tight knit, strong community as well with our fellowship and just people we interact with locally here. Yeah. And it got to the point of like like have we ever thought about these things when it comes to communication and a game plan. and what's the game plan? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> so just in case you're new here, welcome. We do cover preparedness and stocking up and how to cook from your stockpile. And we have cookbooks and different things like that to help you and resources and tools. We'll leave that all below with all of our other goodies that we have <laughs> in the description. But if you're new here, we have some some videos that talk about kind of doing this in, from a state of um, freedom, not fear. And, and we're going to cover yeah. more of that today. Yeah. Again, just to talk about it again, but go check out those videos because this is something that is very important to us. Do we consider ourselves crazy preppers? No. Do we consider ourselves um, old school in seeing the wisdom and how like grandma and grandpa and great grandma and grandpa used to do things? 100%. Yeah. Like there's a reason they did things and prepared for the winter and prepared for times Rainy that are seasons. lean, right? Yeah. Things when, you know, it, it there's years and days of plenty and then there's challenging years and days, you know. So being prepared for all those circumstances. Right. And I don't see these issues going away. No, That's, I don't. You know, there's plenty of people out there in the world that do not love our country mm -hmm. and, um, you know, do not love people. Yeah. And so it's very possible that 
that there can be attacks uh, mm -hmm. based upon these things. This is not pie in the sky. These things are happening. We probably don't know about most of the things yeah. that are happening. And I think to that point, like they don't even need to be physical attacks. They, they, like now we're talking about digital attacks. You Absolutely. Know? And that's where these things in, in the preparedness mindset, it's you have to think about the what ifs and the whens. And how am I gonna to react to those is one way of looking at it, but then how am I gonna proactively prepare for those things? Because it's, it, these things aren't a matter of ifs, they're a matter of whens. Like humans have issues, whether it's uh, pestilence and disease, or um, whether it's digital attacks, whether it's you know wars and rumors of wars. Yeah. Um, these things happen. It's yeah. it's part of our history, you know. So we're all going to put on our tinfoil <laughs> hats today, and we're going to talk about some of the different areas that we we are preparing in as, as a, a family, yeah. as a lifestyle. These are all things that we have been doing already. But when these things come up, it's a good reminder mm -hmm. to kind of reevaluate your situation and as kids get older like I have two kids that that have driver's license and mm -hmm. can be out and about you know there's just you know sometimes you're at work there's just it's important to kind of talk through come up with a game plan talk right. through situations not again from fear but just from a place of freedom and wisdom and being prepared in every season and it's funny you bring up the the family dynamic of it because we have become as they get older, you become more and more like decentralized. You know, we used to dri drive around as a little a little posse oh, everywhere. Of, of eight or seven. You know, right. when you were out with them, right? Um, and it, so we weren't fragmented as much. And yeah. with these things, there is there's a thought process of like when we are fragmented, not in a bad way. No, it's, it's and we aren't even nearly as fragmented <laughs> as some other people. As, yeah. Yeah, fragmented yeah. as some other families because it's not like we're going here and there and everywhere. But like yeah. I, it's totally normal for me to go run errands alone and leave the kids here or for the kids to go run errands and me be here mm -hmm. with the little kids and him to be somewhere else doing work or, to you know, whatever. Yeah. So that's 100% normal. So it just was unnerving because that day when the cell phones went down, I needed to go grocery shopping. Yep. And I know it's so silly. Like I went to high school with no cell phone. Like I didn't get my first cell phone until he bought it for me when we were dating. Yeah. And I mean, just aged myself a little bit, but it's just, so we lived that way, but it was also a different way of life. There were pay phones everywhere. There were, you know, the, the customer service desk would let you call home. Like it's just, it's just different days that we live in, yeah. you know? And, um, I don't know. It's just crazy how fragile we have and this, become. When a cell service goes down, in a lot of places, now your card processing goes down. Exactly. So now the, you can't the ability to anything. go shopping becomes reduced or limited or not available at that season at that time. Yeah. And we've I've had that situation happen too at the grocery store where the machines aren't working. And so if you don't have cash, you can't buy anything. So you're with us along with the journey right now. We've not talked about this stuff in depth, you know, individually before we got yeah, out here with you guys. We're, gonna, we're um, having a planning session right so now. So Annie and I were talking about a couple of points that we wanted to uh, talk over, but she has talked about like the first thing is communication like what will we do in the event of these things happening communication wise like what's our plan annie we we are a family who have gotten rid of a home phone mm -hmm. so we don't have that however i do have a a uh i don't know what i would call you like you're you think about these scenarios so like we um we have ham radios we do but a ham radio doesn't do us any good if the people that we want to communicate with don't have that. Or if we don't keep them charged <laughs> right, or we don't right, know how right. to use them. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, like I need you around. Yeah. I need you to like not, you know, disappear or anything. Yeah. So these are good points though. So like either kind of coming up with a secondary plan of, and this is more up your alley probably, yeah. but a secondary plan of communication. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not afraid to send the girls to a store without a cell phone. I we, I prefer that, but, I, but it's not necessary. We right. grew up, we survived that way. Right. It's not that big of a deal, but like having a, a way to communicate that is not reliant on cell phone service mm -hmm. or Wi-Fi. Right. And so that's kind of, and I mean, beyond ham radios, I couldn't think, and a home phone, I couldn't think of other situations. Pigeons. Pigeons. <laughs> courier pigeons. Yeah. Two of the things that come to mind right away is if you have the equipment, it's good to have it. That's a good first step. But just like we talk about in the home setting world and the mindset is that you have to have the skills and then be able to apply the skills. And so we have the ham radios. It would probably be wise of us to have 
a spot where they're actually charged up and we're rotating them yeah. um, to go through a little crash course on like basic communications, like what channel we would use to yeah. communicate, maybe putting one of them in the car and rotating them around once a week. Like these are all like, I know some people, once again, tinfoil hat, you'll be thinking like, this is a lot of work to go through, but how hard is it to get on a cycle of where you move one of the extra radios and put it in the car? And this is a skill set that is valuable to learn. Like it's kind of one of the old ways, you know, the the way grandpa and grandma, you know, or it's fun because you've gotten on with some old timers like on the ham radios and have had cool conversations with them. So that's just, it could be a cool like family thing to listen to these guys tell their stories and talk and do these different things too. Like, and it it doesn't hurt to do it. You know, it's honestly kind of not, it's not a big investment up front. It's a, it's a minor one. It can be, I guess, if you go crazy, but But it's having a pre thought of like going through the process of knowing how to use it and knowing the basics of it. It's kind of like riding a bike. Once you figure it out, you'll, you'll, you'll get that skill and you'll have it for the rest of your life. So ham radios, I think is a good one. They're pretty inexpensive. You can get into them. Um, yes, there's license and regulations and rules, but let's be honest, people, In that situation. at the end of the day, if you have them on hand, um, you have them available that you can use them. And I don't think that there's going to be a lot of people running around stopping you from using them if something like that goes on. There'll be a lot of other things that they're worried about. Yeah, so they're not worried about if you're using a radio. The other one that goes with like tornadoes or uh, fires is a rally point. You know, this is something that you could speak with your local church. Um, and you, you could say, if anything happens that becomes long-term um, based or um, even becomes to where you just want to meet up with your community to kind of have a game plan and have a time, like maybe on at six o'clock on any given night, you would all meet at a location and you would have a known location. So, and maybe you would just send a delegate from the family to go and have a quick powwow and come up with a plan. But this is part of growing that greater community of of networking and resource gathering and having that in place. Because if you don't have it in place, you're like a bunch of lost sheep. <laughs> you don't have that that place to come back to and kind of have that instruction given. Yeah, you don't you don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah. you know, instead of like worrying about, you know, emailing and phones, like those are two very basic things. A ham radio, a couple key locations, and a rally point. Like, yes, it might be one of those things that you never use. But Hopefully you, you don't. If you have I mean, a community, that's how yeah. all these things are. It's not like, you know, we prepare and, you know, stock our root cellar and stuff with hopes that disaster will strike. <laughs> but the odds are history proves that things will come up, that challenges will come up. We've talked about this before. Even yeah. if someone goes sick in your family or if a job is lost and suddenly you don't have the income that you had before or even as simple as cell phones going down for, what if it went down for a week? Right. Like, yeah. No attacks, no emergency, just what if you can't communicate for a week? Do you have, uh, you know, a thought process to get from point A to point B with people that you love, right? Right. Um, And especially if you have family members that you need to check on or that you have to keep track of, like I'm thinking about great grandpa and different things like that. These are important things to talk about. So come up with some kind of a solution to communicate with the people that you love in case of a situation where where it's all down and you can't access them something besides cell phone and wi-fi yeah a couple other things we're going to touch on real quick moving along is food and water like your necessity type of things right yeah these are food having a food stockpile um and a water stockpile and kind of your toiletries necessities this is what we've covered in the past Mm -hmm. and that's that tends to be what people um, go to first mm-hmm. and which is good. Everybody needs to eat. And I have six kids. They all want to eat, you know, <laughs> and a husband. And so, uh, having a food supply mm-hmm. for a year, that's what my goal is for my family. And I recommend for other people, you also have to become good about rotating and making sure you're going through that food. We have covered this at length and maybe we can tag a video here or whatever, but um, like how to rotate through and to make sure you're using your stockpile yes. and not letting it go bad. Do not invest in food that you will not eat. We do not support that at all. And to that point real quick, Annie has the meal planning for a year and that helps us to passively work through yeah. that stockpile. So it's, it's literally built into our way of life that we're eating through meals 
that we are going to be consuming and that we have those raw uh, resources yeah. on hand to make those. So Absolutely. Um, that's another thing that we live off of, you know. Yeah, and it helps it helps you begin to build that stockpile in your mind when you put together kind of like, okay, if I had to come up with a year, you know, a year's worth of meals, which I I did, mm -hmm. you know, I showed you guys how to do that in this video and resources that I have, but that helps you build out. Like you know exactly how much flour you need for your for my size family. Yep. I mean, your family's going to look different than my family, but you build it out according to that and then if you need to deviate because you don't have fresh produce let's say it's not summer then you deviate to a canned version of that that right. you put away so it might not be what you want to eat but it's it's uh, still we would there. do pretty good yeah, yeah. i don't think we'd be hurting at all <laughs> so that is kind of a basic that everyone looks at needing to make sure that you have food in a in, in an emergency situation that you have water in that situation and that you have the toiletries and necessities yeah. that are pivotal in that situation. The water supply issue or the water supply uh, filtration that you can look into is the Berkey water filters. They don't make them underneath Berkey anymore. It's another company now because they got dissolved. Um, but there's there's water pur purification systems out there that you can get that you can use like rainwater or um, you know just surface water. We work with RPS solar pump systems, so that's another link we can throw down there so that you can have a backup system or a primary system for moving water from your well. But these are things that you have to think about. Do I want to invest in them? And is this a necessity for our homestead specifically? Not only is water a necessity for us personally, but then we also have to think about the animals that we're keeping and our walking food storage that we talk about, yeah. the, the food storage on, on foot. We don't have to get super deep into water and food and all those things, but these are things to consider as far as when these things happen, have I started to build these up and am I using the resources I have around me? Right, because when a situation comes up, Mm -hmm. And we're talking about, again, we're not necessarily talking about like the end of all things. No. We're talking about hurricanes, you know, uh, lines, electricity lines being done. This stuff happens all yeah, the I, time. I mean, it's simple, as simple ice as ice storms. storms. Yeah. yeah, especially down south. So these things happen. They come up. It's not like it's not like they don't. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. We're not living in fear of these things, but it's being practical and proactive. That when these things come up, if you wait for the hurricane to arrive to go to the grocery store, it's going to look like those pictures you've seen yeah, on the news, yeah. right? Where and everything's empty. And it's a biblical principle. You know, the the word talks about the rain falling on the just and the unjust alike. It talks about. Um, having that Joseph mindset of, you know, that there, there's seasons of plenty and then there's there's also seasons of want. Right. And whether that's on a personal level, on a regional level, or a global level, these things do and they are going to happen when it comes to life. It's just how yes. life is. So Absolutely. So make sure you have your stockpiles built back up if you've gotten lazy, which <laughs> I know happens. It's easy. And this yeah. time of year is tricky for people that maybe like gardening and doing different things. Thankfully, we have a pretty good stockpile still from like, we're still eating from like two, three years, four years old yeah. food. And it's good. It's fine. Like be at peace, you know. Yeah. Um, but but we've, we that... haven't gone into harvest season yet. So we're right now living off of all the stuff that we've already put away. Yeah, and... We've water glassed eggs. We've put up meat and you know that we've canned you know there's there's a Freezers, lot that we've done. Yeah. yeah yeah absolutely so. let's move on so we've talked about communication we've talked make sure you've got that communication uh situation figured out make sure you've got your food water necessities supplied restocked if you've gotten lazy um we've already covered a little bit of this already but make sure you have a game plan yeah. and again hopefully you don't ever need to use this game plan but i liked what you said already especially with like our our friends or fellowship church mm -hmm. folks, you know, like have a conversation out loud. Right. Like, hey guys, if things ever go south or go crazy, you know, we've we do all have cars currently with fuel in them. Yeah. <laughs> um, hop in your car and let's meet on, you know, this time on Wednesday night at you know this, this place. Location, yeah. If everything, if things go downhill, this is where we're going to meet and when we're going to meet. And yeah. that's just you know you have the peace of mind knowing what to do. Yeah. That it's at least a point of connection. Same thing with your family and your kids. If you're if you have kids that are all out of your household already or parents or whatever, loved ones, you just sit down and you have a conversation and say, hey, I know this is weird, but like <laughs> if things ever hit the fan yeah. and we're in trouble, yeah. um, let's meet 
at the very next, whatever that, you know, let's, whatever day it is, it doesn't matter. Let's meet on the very next Saturday at 10 a.m. at our house and just come together as a family and yeah. have a game plan talk, right? And back with the ham radios, quick, the ham, the ham radio clubs, they have things where they do like a, a net call or a, um, a club gathering type of thing. And they have the same things. Like they know that it's standing um, every Saturday night at 6 p.m., that they're at um, on a on a communication gathering place, which is so. I mean, yeah. it's kind of the old way of doing things. Yeah. I mean, I remember you know driving places in high school, and you had a game plan, and you were supposed to meet at this restaurant at this time. And if someone didn't show up, you're just like, well, I guess something happened, you know. Yeah. Like, and it's like it's just we've become so reliant on all of these things. So yeah. it's just funny how how different things are, you know? I think the other one that we can keep short is um, your medical supplies, whether that's your like emergency medical supplies for like bandages and, you know, alcohol and uh, hydrogen peroxide and, you know, antibiotics, all that kind of stuff. Um, or it's on a, on a more necessity type of side when it comes to like my daily prescriptions. Do I have those things stocked up or have I talked to my doctor about getting um, maybe two or three months of those that I can keep in an emergency status yeah, just in at, case. at home. And this is something that most doctors are understanding of, um, if, especially if you go to them initially, do your um, evaluation and they've got you on a treatment plan type of thing. If you're on something for a period of time, you can usually talk to them and get them, you know, maybe you're going on an extended vacation. Um, um, there's different ideas that you can do to throw out. Get creative. Yeah, get creative in communicating, you know, that you're going to be gone for a little while or that you want access to these things because it, it is your medication that you need access to. So I don't think that's a lot to get into there. Yeah. But having the medical necessities for the emergency side of things and then those medicines in place for just the everyday use that you need to maintain your personal health. And I think this, you know, the world changed a little bit, a lot after COVID and all of that stuff. And I think that it it just makes you think into things further. Yeah. And we're not going to get into all of that today, yeah. but it's good to have, you know, I mean, there's things I keep stocked in the house all the time now. Yeah. Um, we make our own homemade organic elderberry syrup and stuff like that here and have our raw honey here. And we ship it all over the country. But if I, you know, like we have those things here for our family yeah. stocked up and ready to go. And we have certain things because we obviously prefer naturally minded things. I know yeah. that you can't always do that. And in an emergency situation, I support having help, you know, from medical supplies and different things. Yeah. And that totally medically related, but like even that goes back to like the elderberry stuff or Julianne making her homemade sourdough and she has starters that she sends all over to people too. But like having... Those even like the yeast that break down things and yeah, the that's sourdough. Yeah, back to food. It, it's <laughs> We're back, back to it, to I know, food. but it, it goes back into that mentality of sometimes having the raw goods, like the other berry syrup. We don't have to have made here, right. but if you have all of the things that are in the raw state to make it, then you can assemble it and make it at that point in time. Right. So I would consider that like a medical supply because yeah. that's what we go to first. You know, having a high dose vitamin C accessible, having mm -hmm. vitamin D accessible. Um, having the elderberry and the raw honey and the yeah. apple cider vinegar and all these things, having them here in my house. But if I wait until suddenly a supply chain situation comes up and everything's gone, then you're kind of like, oops, okay. Some things you can absolutely live, a lot of things you can live without, but there's some things that are staples that you just have to keep situated in a safe place in your house so that you have it ready. And I think going into all of these, the last one we'll go into here, but the rotation, like don't overwhelm yourself with doing this all at, well, you can't, most people can't run out today and buy all of this stuff in bulk and have it on hand and then it just sits there and they don't use it. What you have to come up with is the lifestyle of rotating these things and it's gonna tie right into the next thing of, for us, we have to consider animal food, fuel, and those types of things. And most people don't have the ability to keep a ton of fuel on site for a long time because a if you're using gasoline that goes bad after a point in time even if you stabilize it it's just not good to sit there forever especially with weather changes and stuff does yeah. that affect that affects it a little bit doesn't it it's just one of those things though that if you get into using it yeah every, then it doesn't matter then it doesn't matter you t you know once once a week once a month whatever your use is is that you have some five gallon uh, fuel cans that you put back in your car and yeah. then you go get fresh fuel into those cans. Or uh, when it comes to the animal feed, maybe you have a stock of animal feed that you get, 
but with any food, um, most of it's not long-term shelf stable. So you have to rotate through yeah. your animal food. So maybe you have 50 pound bags of chicken feed that you have a, a, a pallet of it, mm -hmm. but don't run out of that pallet, <laughs> yeah. have the pallet and have another pallet sitting there next to it. That's, you know, maybe a month later or two months, however you rotate it. And now you always have two pallets sitting there in your barn, Yeah. but they're just getting leapfrogged and worked through. Right, because it doesn't, I mean, we are obviously, we have a homestead and we raise our own <laughs> food and meat and different things, just in case you're new. And not everybody has that, but you probably, you might have a pet, you might have a dog, a cat, whatever exactly. yeah. critters you have at your house, or maybe you just have chickens. And let's say these situations, like now, mm -hmm happen in the winter, it's not like I can just free, I can free range my chickens and my sheep, but they need supplemental feed. So you have to have a game plan. Mm -hmm. And again, this goes for all of these categories. Mm -hmm. You don't just buy stuff for the sake of throwing money down the drain. You buy stuff in bulk. You usually can get it cheaper if you buy it in bulk and then have a safe place to store it and then go through it. Like Josh just said, you have yeah. to rotate through it, but invest you know, I feel like stocking up in the, these type of situations is one of the best investments you can make because it's just a peace of mind mm -hmm. when things come up. And it's not like you're not going to use these things anyway. I will never again buy, we shared this story in the past where we invested not a lot of money, but mm -hmm. back when we first kind of started stocking up, and this is like two or three houses ago. Yeah. Um, the long-term storage. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm sure, I think that has a name, but yeah. Number something cans. Yeah, the big cans. The big uh, cans, yeah. whatever they are. The big cans, you know, you buy these big things and you store them forever. And 20 years shelf life. Yeah, 30 years, 20 years yeah. shelf life. And I, I like to tell this story so people think about it, but my sister-in-law and brother-in-law opened up the cans to taste some of the food to see. Yeah. And I think it was 10 years in or something like that. They t tasted some of the food to see like, hey, can we really survive off this if we have to? And I'm sure you could, but it all tasted like metal. Yeah. And that really resounded with me. And I was like, okay, if I had a choice between that or if I could choose filling my root cellar with fresh, delicious, home canned products. So you absolutely can go to the grocery store and stock up on those canned items and rotate through those. Just make sure you're getting things that you will eat, yeah, you, enjoy. you will rotate through. And I'm telling you, you just can't beat the homegrown stuff if you can learn how to can and process. We have all sorts of videos on that. Um, and I'll continue to make that going, make more of those. Um, we got a new four jars, stovetop, pressure canner. I'm really excited to try that and check <laughs> it out. We'll be doing that all through the growing season coming up and sharing that with all of you. So anyway, the point is it's easy. It's a few easy skills to learn to maybe like make sure that you're ready in these situations. Yeah. And, and it's a good thing to practice before things go south, yeah. right? Or before a situation comes up. So just making sure some of those like, you know, those extra points, like the fuel, the animals, uh, generator and having the fuel for the generator, having, you already touched on this already, but having a uh, solar pump for your well, like yeah. is it the electricity goes out and you don't have a generator, we can't get water out of our well, right? <laughs> right? We don't have a hand pump. And I think the important thing with all this is like someone sitting there from, when you're starting from scratch, you can feel extremely overwhelmed. Yes. And that is a very, very fair, that's a fair feeling. Yes. Um, but when you, when you leverage into this slowly, um, over a lifestyle, you're, you're rotating through these things, you're building up these things, you're learning skills. Um, you know, we've gotten to the point of where we have stuff on how to can meat, you know, and there's a lot of people who are afraid of canning meat. And that's been a huge resource for us to have that we rotate through. So, you know, building the skill set along with the rotation is really, it gives you that peace of mind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then just taking it um, one step at a time before trouble hits. Again, yeah. I just am emphasizing that. Yeah. So like if I, I didn't just go out of, and purchase or can up a whole year's worth of food for my family of eight, keep that in mind. <laughs> so I'm used to big numbers. I'm yeah. used to big bulk, you know, grocery bills that are big. Like I'm used to that. And sometimes, you know, I'll share my grocery hauls with y'all <laughs> and you'd be like, oh my goodness, you know, it like shocks people. And I'm like, whoa, I, I have to feed eight people. That Multiply doesn't shock that me yeah. at all, yeah. you know. It actually makes me happy because usually I'm buying in bulk um, yeah. from either our Azure Standard, you know, uh, different places that we love and saving money <laughs> and yeah. so i'm like oh really i thought that was pretty good you know or aldi or whatever make sure you're kind of coming up with the game plan start small build up a month 
start with a month, you yeah. know, and then work your way up and get your body, your mind, your heart, all these things in the process of rotating through and coming up with like how it works best for you and your family. Yep. Yeah. Because everybody's different, right? My family of eight might be different than your family of two. It's just running numbers and coming up with, with a solution, right? Do I want trouble? No. Do I want challenges or, or kind of um, situations to come up like came up the other day? No, not necessarily. Yeah. I mean, do I want peace? Of course, always. But do I find value when those things come up? I absolutely do. And it makes me think about good reminder <laughs> yeah it makes me think about these situations think through them mm -hmm. um, have it prompts conversations between you and I and usually there's rarely is it just you and I usually there's kids sitting around and yeah. we so we're wise about what we say but we're kind of implementing that heart that mind that perspective into our families so that they can start to grasp a hold of like this philosophy and turn it into more of a lifestyle as yeah. opposed to like a Fear reaction. Yeah, or yeah. a tin foil hat thing. It's just a <laughs> lifestyle thing, right? Eventually, you proudly wear the crazy prepper uh, <laughs> title, you know, and be like, yeah, we're ready, you know, <laughs> like we've got it situated and ready and all of that. Um, and, you know, people will, people tend to get after us for telling people that we have a stockpile. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. So um, we're happy to share um, any ideas and wisdom and experiences that we've been through, share it with all of you to open up the dialogue and the conversation so that you can feel prepared and ready whenever those situations do come up and they will come up. But we choose peace in those circumstances, not fear. Um, it offers us freedom when we choose to kind of prepare ahead of time as opposed to when we're in a state of trouble. So if you've stuck with us for this long, hit that subscribe button down below and let us know how you've been preparing and if you've even started your preparation journey. Have you started a stock up for a month? Are you set, set up for a year? Where are you at in your journey? And have these conversations caused you to think about how you can prep up prep up or stock up in a better way. And we want to know what topics you want us to cover. Um, if you want us to break it down and simplify it a little bit more, like learning how to water glass eggs or learning what to do when you go buy all that flour from the store, let us know below in the comments what would interest you and we will cover those topics. So thank you all so much. We hope you have a blessed day and we will see you in the next video.